Hi, I'm David and welcome to Leisure Bit. And you join me for breakfast this morning as we try out the new table I've fitted. And this is a rotating table. It's fitted on a Lagun style bracket, which is mounted to the back door. Find out why I've done it that way and what benefits it brings. But before then, I'm gonna have some breakfast. Let's get cracking. That was a delicious breakfast. The table has come in so handy for so many different purposes. Whether it be a drinks table flipped back, it's also fantastic to use with your computer. Plenty of space there. You can get a cup of tea at the side, how about that? Or the iPad. Great if you want to make some notes as well, you can rest on it to write, or to put your coffee on, or your drinks on. Or indeed, to have a meal from. It's absolutely brilliant, it's not too big, and of course, you can open the door with it on as well, so it doesn't impede your exit. But the biggest benefit of all with it is, it's given almost half a metre of extra floor space. 53 centimetres, so just under two foot. I didn't realise how valuable that space is between the seats at the back, as Roxy's super happy now because she's got somewhere she can tuck in, and she's not getting trodden on when you're getting on and off the seats. Let's take a look at what we did to install it. I'll not show you the bit of me drilling the holes and bolting it on because it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just need to mark your holes up, don't forget the age old thing. Measure twice, drill once, um, because you can only make the hole once and if you get it in the wrong place it's not too good. I made myself a little template just on a piece of paper and put the bracket on, drew round it and then just drew where the uh, screw holes needed to go. It just makes it a little bit easier to fit then. Let's take a look at the table leg system now. We've got this bracket which comes as part of the Lagun style kit with one, two, three, four bolts in it. The four bolts go through this piece of wood here which I got as part of a kit. Then the bolts go through that, the holes are pre-drilled, and then I drilled four holes. One, two, three, four holes. In the door of the van, just be careful, if you decide to do this, just be careful because you've got the lock mechanism up here, and you need to make sure you're clear of the lock mechanism. Let's see where the lock mechanism, I've tried to make it flush along this side, just keeps it nice and tidy. And then the table basically fits onto this. There's a piece at the back um, that goes the other side of this, which just strengthens it. I also put a bit of ply as well, just to strengthen it up. The, it's fairly solid, as you can see, but there is a tiny bit of lateral movement. Probably pick it up there, which is just the flex on the door. Um, I might at some point in the future just do an improvement to this and just kind of put a beam across, just to keep it even more solid. But it's not bad, it's only if you put a larger table on it. But that's how I've got it set up, so you can see there. That's the bracket. Let's take a look at the leg system now. Turn it over and we can have a look what's going on. This is a Lagun style kit. Um, it's not a genuine one, it was a bit cheaper. I'm not sure if the quality varies much, but it seems to be pretty well made. This is the, the basically the bit that goes in the back, the vertical part. And you've got an adjustment on here just basically turns round. Each of them have this little bit where you press the button in and lift it up so that you can do a ratchet type uh, motion to tighten it up so that the handle doesn't have to rotate fully round like we see there. That slides into this part here. So that's the vertical. And then we've got the horizontal bit. So this is this part here. We'll take it off so we can have a look. On this one we've got two adjusters. Uh, we've got one uh, which goes like that, and that fastens together. And then we've got the other one that goes into the tabletop. You can see which way around it goes because you've got the, the larger bit that the insert goes into because it tapers in slightly so it grips it when you tighten it up. And that goes into this one like that. So that then gives you 
me. With regards to the tabletop here, I got that from Clear Cut Conversions. It was a made to measure size. It was about £30, something in the region of that price. Uh, but the price does vary depending on the size you want. The reason for getting this size is, is pretty much the width of between the cushions. It doesn't encroach then on the on each side of it, which is what we wanted. You can see you can just get it in between. And there's different colours available. I just went for the slightly off-white and the uh, uh, black trim on it. It comes in different styles, you can get patterns and things like that as well depending on your preference but I thought this worked pretty well. It's just a case of fitting one, two, three, four, five, six screws and that mounts it to there. Top tip for you as well with regard to the screws, always make sure that they aren't going to protrude through to this size. I've made that mistake before, fortunately it was on a cheap B&M tabletop and I thought the screws would be absolutely fine but the kit they just to say started poking through. So you want them long enough to get a decent enough hold on it but you don't want them too long that they're going to come through because it just spoils the job and then you need a new top. Let's get this fitted back on. I do like these tops because they are pretty light. Obviously the uh, metal work and that has a little bit more weight about it. We will pop this on here. That lined up. We'll drop it roughly. Pop the top back on. That down there. And then we just want to get the height about right. So I'm just going to lower it very slightly. About there. And then we can just tighten it up. And we just tighten up underneath. There's adjustment here. There's adjustment here. And there's adjustment here. Now you've got movement there. And then you've got movement on there. And you can also adjust the height by adjusting this one. And that will lift up and down there. And then we can flip it that way. And adjust it that way. And flip it round like that. It'll move over that way, we'll come over here, you can really tuck in under it and we can flip it around, put it into night mode so we can use it as a drink stand and just tighten things up as required just to make sure it doesn't uh, move around. But that's the tabletop there, that's it fitted and very handy indeed it is. One of the key things of course is we can then we can open the doors and if we open the door with the table attached what it basically does it'll just come out like that. Now that's also really handy as a table in the summer for outside so you can drop it down a little bit use it as an outside table for putting things on for multi-purpose and it doesn't impede your exit if you need to get out. It's got completely clear now. You could even use it for serving out the back. How about that? Anyway, it's raining. I'm going to shut the door. So there we have it. That's the table. The table that turns and all in all it cost just over £100 which I think is very reasonable. And the biggest advantage it's given is so much more floor space. And it's given Roxy a little kennel underneath. Well, it's not really a kennel, is it? But it's her little safe place underneath the uh, table here. Nothing wrong at all with the setup we previously had with the tripod. Let's go through the advantages and the disadvantages I've found from fitting this. Let's start with the advantages. First one is... It's freed up a heck of a lot of floor space. It's nearly half a metre of floor space gets freed up. And it's surprising what a difference that makes. It's also helped us as well to, to work out how important that floor space is. Because everything now is kind of pushed back towards the back of the van. So whether Roxy's in and she can tuck under here and she loves it, it's her little safe place. Or whether it's we've got the e-bike in because we want to store it inside because we might be going somewhere we don't want to leave it out on the back that'll go here as well and it'll push right back against the door whereas previously with the table in it was bringing it quite a way forward 
and if you want to stop for a cup or en route or something like that it was a bit of a pain whereas now it'll fit underneath this table which is brilliant. The second advantage is the manoeuvrability of the table. You can move it around and put it wherever you want to so it's comfortable to either eat, relax or potentially even do a bit of work. You can get it so it's in a nice comfortable position and if you're out on the road you can adjust it so you really capture the view. So you can set your angle so you can sit this way, you can sit looking down towards the van, you can sit any which way you like. With some of the bigger tabletops in you get even more movement but we'll come on to that in a moment. And the third advantage of it is it doesn't block the walkway so it keeps it nice and clear. There's a fourth advantage but this is more from a safety perspective. It's actually fixed to the back door whereas the tripod wasn't actually fixed to anything so if you had to brake really really hard or heaven forbid you ended up rolling the van that's going to go all over the place whereas this is actually fixed to the back door so it should stay relatively in situ. I appreciate it's probably not the biggest worry what the table's doing in a situation like that and fingers crossed it doesn't happen to us or any of you guys but it is properly secured it's not going to come off providing you've tightened it up all right. Now the disadvantages. So there's not many disadvantages um, but one of them is and it's worth calling out is because it's fitted to the door and fitted to that metal on the side there is a little bit of flex in it as you can probably see there and that actual flex is coming from the door there's a little bit of lateral movement. Now with a tabletop of this size it's absolutely fine but if you put a big tabletop like this one on the lateral movement you'll probably see I'll bring the physics into it now the further we go out the more lateral movement you will get if you put a much bigger tabletop on you're going to get more lateral movement now it's something I thought about actually putting some braces on in the back door just to try and remove that a little bit so we'll maybe come on to that and do it as a bit of an enhancement in the future but for now this is absolutely fine but don't expect to be able to hang a huge table off and just bolting it to the side of the door because there is some flex in the metal of the door. The other thing you probably don't want to do as well there's a limit on the weight the doors will take so you probably don't want to be going mad. This is fine for putting your coffee, your tea or any other beverage you fancy on and it's absolutely fine for you know working on your laptop, having your lunch from or whatever else. Um, it's not something you'd want to sit on, clearly not, uh, not designed to take, certainly not my weight anyway. There's a second disadvantage, when you open the flap underneath the seat here to get access to the under seat it actually does catch on the bracket. Now there's two ways of sorting that, either pop the door open at the back or lift the table off because it does clear it. Um, if you haven't got the table attached. Personally I've not found it a problem but it's worth calling out. You can still get in as you can see but if you need the door fully open then it's one of those two things either open the back door or just lift the table off the stand. I've not had to do that I've managed to get everything I need out from underneath. The other side is absolutely fine that flips down and clears it because it's it's not going beyond the centre line. The reason you need the spacer as well is just to move it out far enough so that the mechanism works and it gives enough clearance there. For me it's been an absolute game changer mainly for the extra floor space it gives but we still have the um, tripod and the stand and we use it with a, one of the other tabletops and we've got a round one and we've got this wider one which is perfect if you want to have full dinner or anything like that rather than just snacks or breakfast. So just to show you on this one, the tripod one, you can actually take off the other top you can see how those are fitted, it comes with mounts, you can buy those separately and then you can get different lengths of leg. There's a shorter one and a longer one. I went for the longer one just to give plenty of clearance. It's probably a tad too high, probably could on a little bit lower. Here's the table that came with the van or the tabletop. We can pop that one on there and then we've got a full table again. Keeping this um, still very useful. So you can swap the tops over on that. 
fantastic but this is super handy just as a little helpful table. There's the uh, tripod base on this one. You can actually unscrew this and then that'll just twist out like that and then the base and the leg will store separately. Just clip the leg up and they just store behind the driver's seat along with the tabletop. I do love how lightweight this is. See it's had various holes in the back, it looks like a dartboard. Um, that's just where various brackets and things have been fitted in the search for the perfect table solution. I did try this one fitted on here. Whilst this option works really well for us, it might not be the right option for you. There's so many different approaches and it depends what you use the van for what solution works best. So this is just a way I've found that works brilliant because it's freed up all that floor space. So it gets the thumbs up from me on that. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. And we still have the advantage of the table we can take outside. So we've not wasted money on any of that stuff. And what's right for you is what's right for you. Don't forget to check the links in the description if you're after any of these bits and pieces. And don't forget as well, if you're doing modifications to your van, do make sure you check out your impact on your warranty, insurance and anything else with the van. And always make sure you do it safely. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this useful and I'll catch you for the next bit. Bye.